Okay, I finally got one of the clear pass servos mounted uh, to my old uh, J2 bridge port here. Um, power supply is wired up according to the manual. Um, I got it hooked up. I plugged the USB straight into the computer and it come up and connected to the servo and just says plain out no power, which that makes sense because the it's still unplugged. I did uh, verify my voltages. I'm going to be running right at 77, 78 volts um, with the power supply that I have. Um, I'm going to continue to uh, set this thing up, catch up with you in a few. Okay, we have uh, clicked along a few things here and we have started the auto tune process on the Y. You can hear it there, maybe. It's moving the table, shaking it there. But uh, we're on our way to making this thing run. going to do this for 15 to 20 minutes so well, this is the starting of it I'll come back and let you guys know how it comes out we are 8% in so here it is just a couple minutes later and you can see it's moving the digital display up there and we are about 28% way through and on. Looks like uh, not doing too bad there. Not too much load. Let's say this is the 1392 ounce inch NEMA 34 model. Um, we've got the actual model number here somewhere. I'll try to post it in the descriptions. But uh, Still working on the auto tune process. So we're just moving a few thousands there right now. Know if you can hear it for the fan, but the fellow's got to have some heat in the garage. From what I can tell, the thing is pretty quick. Um, I've had it rotating up to 250 RPM, uh, and it didn't take very long to get to the end of the Y. Looks like we are about 79-80% and we're throwing stuff on the floor. Looks like the uh, auto-tune is complete already. I'll bring you back when we uh, get to the next important step. Hi fellas, um, this is John Lambert back with uh, JB3 Moto. Um, the old Bridgeport meal. Trying to change it over to uh, the clear pass servos. I have the uh, NEMA 34 size with the 1392 ounce inch um, mounted to the Y axis of the mill here. Uh, you can see it there. I was just going to show you how it runs, how quiet it is, and how fast. 
I try and keep the digital display there in the top corner so we can see it moving. Uh, the motor seems to have plenty of power to do what it's doing. Um, I'm going to move it just with the ClearPass Servo um, software. So here it is. Uh, the drive is enabled and it is ready to go and the uh, to go away from the camera. So uh, here we go. Um, we're going to be jogging it at uh, 500 RPM with a ramp speed of 10,000 RPM per second. So uh, here we go. There's a little over 11 inches of travel already. Uh, it didn't take very long to get there. Um, we'll bring it back. Uh, basically no sound. Very responsive at that 10,000 uh, RPM per second rate. So we'll slow it down here to, um, here's a thousand. We'll jog the other direction. You can see how long it takes a little longer. It coasts, starts, stops. Um, here's 100 on 100 RPMs per second of ramp time. So it takes a little while to get going, but still reaches speed. But you got to watch that setting, it'll coast a long way on you. I'm going to bring him back just a little bit. There we go. Had the uh, servo maxed out there trying to get to a position that it couldn't achieve. So when you bring this back up to like the 10,000 RPM per second, uh, the, the drive is super responsive. Uh, that's as fast as I can click the mouse right there. Um, looks like about 300 thousandths, 150 thousandths per click. Uh, so, um, all I ended up doing was the auto tune on the drive uh, with everything that you see on the mill sitting there because this shop gets a lot of different uses. Uh, we do a lot of powder coating, um, general repairs, you just name it. You never know what's going to come through the door. Um, but anyway, this is the ClearPass Servo. It is mounted with some eBay special. Uh, zero backlash uh, Lovejoy style couplers um, for 12 bucks a piece I think is what I paid and then I made the mount there um, on my big 9 by 20 mil that was a challenge in itself because the swing wasn't enough to clear the material um, but the mount works really well um, doesn't seem to have too much play in the ball screws that I installed um, with the manual handles, they still had about three thousandths of backlash from one direction to the other. I don't think that's going to make uh, too big a difference right now. Um, I do have the Masso unit uh, set up uh, in the cabinet here for this uh, machine. I'll be getting it out and hopefully on video here in the next couple weeks uh, around Christmas. Might have a little bit of time off from work to make everything happen. So. But uh, that's, uh, that's the clear pass servo on the bridge port. It uh, moves right along. Has no problem going where it wants to go. According to a calculator that i done, I should have about 2,000 pounds of force on the table with that ball screw combination. Um, there, see, there's 500 RPM. Uh, we can drop it to 100 RPM. Um, we can drop it to 10 RPM. And you can only see the digital gauge up there moving, basically. Uh, it's hard to catch the, the actual uh, table moving. Uh, we can move it down to 1 RPM if we want. Um, then you can see it's moving in thousands. But uh, it is not having a problem moving the servo. It looks like the servo's at about 27, 28% of its capacity at the moment. So, um, that was one RPM. I don't know if you, 
you should still be able to see the uh, we're gonna do a 0.1 RPM and uh, see if we can still see the digital move yeah the digital up air is moving a half a thousandth per division at a jaw rate of 0.1 RPM so that's that's pretty cool um, the motor doesn't have any problems moving the table that's for sure and we're back to 500 here's 550 I've had it fault a couple times it'll jog a little but won't hardly run for a very long period of time there we're about to exceed its limits. Uh, we'll try 575. And uh, still able to jog there with no following error. Um, we're going up to 595. I have had it fault at 600. So there's 595 RPM with a 10,000 per second ramp rate. Um, I did not purchase the ClearPath Servo uh, power supply. Um, I just because I had one laying around. Um, I may go back and buy that once the machine's actually up and running, because I have gotten a few uh, voltage saturation problems with this high ramp speed. So I may go back to that um, after the machine's up and running if I have any problems. So see. Here we go. Uh, here's the 600 mark, 600 RPM. Um, we're going up to 625. Make sure which way I'm going. But it doesn't seem to have too many problems. Um, we're going up to uh, 650. So that's moving pretty good right there. I'm surprised it was still actually going that fast. Um, here we go. There's 700 RPM. We'll, we'll just take it up to see how fast it will go. Um, 750. Seven fifties is moving right along. Let's try eight hundred. I'm pretty sure this motor isn't advertised to run this fast, but uh, here we go. There's eight hundred RPM. That's booking right along. Nine hundred. Wow, that is flying. And a thousand. That ought to be able to machine some parts. The old Bridgeport ain't going to be strong enough to do that. There's a thousand RPM. Uh, 1100. And make sure we bring it back here. There's 1100 RPM. 1200. Oh, there we go. That did fault the drive on the back of the motor. Um, it looks like we got um, exceeded the max bus voltage. So it must have gave back some feedback to the power supply. Um, after talking to the guys at ClearPath for about 45 minutes on the phone, basically the only thing you can do to destroy this motor is to wire it up physically backwards on the polarity. So just a they said they're really robust. Uh, they have an excellent warranty. Uh, if you guys are thinking about changing your old machine over, it's definitely a path to consider. So, have a good night. I'm going to bed.